We are going to continue with the rest of our honorees in a moment, but before we do this, this evening will not be complete without hearing from someone who knows about lupus firsthand. Someone who has gone through a lot in her life and yet has committed personal time and effort towards helping other lupus patients. She is a volunteer trained instructor of the Foundation's patient education classes, which are offered free of charge to newly diagnosed lupus patients and their families. And she has taken on the big responsibility of being the volunteer social media director of LFMC. She is also a participant in one of LFMC's newest patient programs, the Lupus Buddy Program. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Christine Von Riesling. We share half of our ethnicity. Okay. Hi, I'm Christine. Um, some of you know my story, but a lot of you don't. Our volunteers all know it back there. Um, I wrote a whole big thing, and I, I realized that I printed it out really tiny. <laughs> and I can't read it. <laughs> but I'll read what I can. Um, so I recently took over the social media for the LFNC, and that's strictly on a volunteer basis. <laughs> I don't need any more. Um, and then a few days ago, I came across a quote that really struck a chord with me. It said, it never occurred to me that one day I'd wake up sick and never get better. It's a hard realization with people who have lupus. There's no cure. And we won't get any better. There are good days. There's really good days. There's really bad days. Um, it's just a battle. Um, my actual diagnosis of lupus was in August of 2002. My niece was born. And when she was a baby, she used to spend time with me in the hospital, in my hospital bed. Um, she liked going up and down. <laughs> it was fun for her. Um, but my... I originally got sick in 1989. Um, I contracted a, not contracted, but I have a rare bleeding disorder. It's called thrombotic thrombocytopedic purpura. My blood cells go on the inside of my veins, and they kind of get sticky together, and then when the rest of the blood passes through, it slices everything. So when I was 14 years old, I went on a trip to Disneyland with my mom and dad, and I bought a, brought a friend with me. Uh, but on that trip, I didn't leave the hotel room. Um, I was on the bed. I had every single blanket that was in that hospital room on me. And I was sitting underneath the little lamp by the side of the bed, just warming my hands and trying to get warm. Um, a few days later, we went to the hospital, and my parents were told that I probably wasn't going to make it. So, um, there have been a lot of times where they've said that I probably won't make it. Um, the lupus has affected my brain. Um, a lot of people have nephritis where their kidneys are affected. Um, mine is my brain. I've forgotten how to walk. I've had to go through therapy to learn how to walk again. Um, and with all the medications that I've been on from, the, from 1989 to now, it's caused my brain to be toxic. So, my main goal in working with the Lupus Foundation is to try and get people to be aware of things before something like this can happen to somebody. Um, I'm looking forward to all these clinical trials. He mentioned the plaque went off, but that's not a good one for me. <laughs> um, all my drugs I've taken, I have all the bad side effects. So, um, it makes things difficult. Every day is difficult to get up. Um, I'm on a, on a scale of one to 10 on that pain level. I'm at a six on a day-to-day -day basis. I've had my knee replaced, my shoulder replaced, another knee needs to be replaced. Um, but all of that can't be done until I'm a little bit better and I'm able to, to get better. Um, trying to think if there's any other point. There's points in here. Um, I've done chemo, rounds of chemo.
chemo from the time I was, oh gosh, I'm not even sure, probably like 16. Uh, so I did Cytoxin a couple different times. Um, all my medications, I'm good for a little bit. And I do really well at hiding the fact that I'm sick. I practiced for a long time. Um, and it makes things difficult too, because people look at me and I look okay. I look like I'm healthy. Um, so I have a lot of friends and stuff that um, when I would get sick, nobody really believed me. Um, sorry. <laughs> My sanity lately has been um, doing the volunteer work for the Lupus Foundation. Um, the classes that I get to teach, the people that I get to meet, um, everything. It's the most amazing thing I think that I could do. Um, I know you don't want to hear all the, the details about it. Um, I have, um, in addition to lupus, I have uh, Sjogren's, I have arthritis, I have osteonecrosis, which is where my bones are dying. I have the brain damage from white matter from the lupus itself. And I have damage from all the medications. Um, I think that my whole point in being here is to help people who are in these situations. I spend most of my nights um, online with people that are on the other side of the world because I can't sleep and they're awake. <laughs> so I made a lot of friends with um, the same bleeding disorder and with all the, a lot of the same conditions. Um, and I think it's just my goal now to help other people and to avoid things like this with the brain, with the toxicity in the brain. Um, and just to bring aware, awareness to people, to know that people can look okay, but it's, What's going on inside that really matters? And I think that's about all I have to say. <laughs>